Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's live poster presentation, High Capacity Magnetic Supports for Automated Antibody and Epitope Tag Protein Purifications. The presenter is Barbara Kabord, PhD, Senior R&D Manager for Protein and Cell Analysis at Thermo Fisher Scientific. I'm Judy O'Rourke, and I will be your moderator for this educational webcast presented by LabRoots and sponsored by Thermo Fisher Scientific. Before we begin, I would like to remind everyone this event is interactive, and we encourage you to participate by submitting as many questions as you want at any time you want during the presentation. Just click on the green Q&A button located in the lower left of the presentation window and type your question into the box that appears on the screen. We'll answer as many questions as we have time for at the end of the presentation. Also, please notice you'll be viewing the poster in the slide window. To enlarge the window, just click on the screen icon located on the lower right. If you have trouble hear seeing or hearing the presentation, please click on the support button at the top right of the presentation window, or use the Q&A button to let us know that you're having a problem. This webinar has been approved for continuing educational credits. Please click on the CE button at the bottom left corner and follow the process to receive your credits. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Kabord. Dr. Kabord received a PhD in biochemistry from the Medical College of Wisconsin. Her postdoctoral fellowship was performed at the Pennsylvania State University under the direction of Stephen Benkovic. Dr. Kabord has over 20 years of industry experience, and she currently leads a team of R&D scientists in new product development in the areas of protein interactions, affinity chromatography, and protein sample preparation. I will now turn the presentation over to her. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, I will be presenting the poster, High Capacity Magnetic Supports for Automated Antibody and Epitope Tag Protein Purifications. And what this will uh, illustrate are two automated purification workflows using thermoscientific Kingfisher magnetic particle processors to purify recombinant proteins expressed in two types of mammalian expression systems. And so these systems, or the two that I will be talking about today, are XPCHO and xp 293 which are two mammalian cultured cell systems. And uh, the last is the high-yield human, or HeLa IVT system, which is an in vitro system, uh, translation system capable of synthesizing uh, up to 750 micrograms of recombinant protein per mill of lysate. So both systems express a lot of protein. And that's one of the advantages of using them, as well as that uh, they all provide a greater probability of correct folding of the protein. Uh, they also uh, put on relevant PTMs, or post-translational modifications, and also uh, produce proper disulfide bond formation. So the, um, both expression systems can be used in high-throughput situations, and automating uh, these Small-scale purifications is helpful when handling multiple patient samples or libraries of overexpressed clones, uh, when you're screening uh, expression conditions, or optimizing purification protocols. Uh, traditionally, the purification matrix that's usually used for in automation is magnetic beads. But traditional magnetic beads um, are typically low capacity, and so uh, the high-capacity choice uh, most commonly used in, in protein purification is agarose, but that has a high capacity, but you can't automate it. So I'm going to talk about a system where uh, that's called magnetic agarose that combines the best of both worlds, both the high capacity and the ability to automate. And so this next table shows some of the characteristics of magnetic agarose. Uh, basically, that it consists of a highly cross-linked agarose support. It's magnetic uh, for easy collection and manipulation of the support, um, but it has higher binding capacities. You can see um, at the bottom, it's in the mid per mil range of, for the beads. And this is in contrast to the microgram quantities that are typically purified with traditional magnetic beads. So in the data to follow, I will show automated purification workflows for recombinant antibodies expressed in XPCHO and XB293 using protein AG magnetic agarose, and also purification of DYK-D4K epitope tag proteins 
using an, a mobilized antibody support uh, specific for that tag. So to start off, the first purification scheme utilizes covalently immobilized protein AG. And so I want to talk a little bit about protein AG. It's a chimeric protein containing five binding domains of both protein A and also two binding domains of protein G. So as you can see from the schematic drawing of the antibodies shown here, these binding domains recognize different regions of the antibody molecule. So the chimeric protein AG provides broader isotope and species selectivity on one purification support. This graph shows that protein AG readily binds IgG from a variety of species, such as mice, uh, humans, and rabbits. And the very similar sets of blue and red bars show that the protein AG magnetic agarose performs equally well in both a manual and automated format. And by manual, I mean collecting the magnetic beads uh, using a stand and, um, and pipetting of wash buffers. Uh, with the automated system, it's a kingfisher system, and uh, it's completely automated or completely hands-off. So this, uh, this gel shows automated kingfish kingfisher purification of antibody expressed and secreted into the media of ex vitro cultures is efficient and reproducible. Um, shown here are samples from 12 purifications of the same antibody sample performed on Kingfisher Flex using protein AG magnetic agarose and analyzed by SDS Page. The unbound fractions for each sample are on the left, and the elutions are seen on the right, where you can see very similar binding efficiencies, recoveries, and importantly, purity of greater than 90%. And then what's shown here is a denaturing gel, and you'll see both the heavy and the light chains at the indicated position. Now, if you do a measurement of the recovered protein from each fraction by protein assay, you can see that you get an average of about 600 micrograms of antibody purified from each half mil media sample, and that the CVs are uh, typically less than 10%, showing good reproducibility. This next example, uh, is an example of anti-CD20 antibody expressed both in the XP Cho system and in the XP293. And two amounts of clarified media samples were incubated directly with protein AG magnetic agarose on the Kingfisher Duo processor. And this time the analysis was done by non-denaturing SDS page. So here you can see the high molecular weight position of the purified antibody in each elution fraction at the top of the gel. So antibody was efficiently bound with little to none in the flow through or FT lanes and uh, recovered efficiently in elution lanes with greater than 95% purity. If you do a protein assay of the recovered fraction, you can again see that about a half a mig of antibody can be efficiently purified from about one mil of media from either expression system. These data illustrate the high binding capabilities of the magnetic agarose and also the value of optimizing purification conditions. So to conclude this portion of the talk, uh, protein AG magnetic agarose is a versatile antibody purification support that can purify recombinant antibodies directly from clarified XP Cho and XP293 culture media supernatants. The automated antibody purification protocol using the Kingfisher Flex and Duo systems efficiently captures and recovers all of the expressed antibody from the cell culture soups with minimal to no nonspecific background. So next, I'll shift gears and focus on the epitope tag protein purification specifically the DYK, D4K tag. So this tag is commonly used in mammalian expression systems because it is small and it doesn't interfere with protein activity and doesn't have a naturally occurring cellular counterpart, so it's biologically unique. 
And it's, this tag is probably more familiar known to most of you as uh, the flag tag uh, commercialized by Sigma. Proteins expressed with this tag are purified using an antibody raised against the tag. So again, it's a very specific system. The anti-DYK-D4K antibody immobilized on our magnetic agarose recognizes both N and C terminal tag proteins as shown in this example of sumo protein tags in either position. Automated purifications of tags GFP and green ranilla luciferase expressed in a high-yield HeLa IBT system were performed using the Kingfisher Flex magnetic particle processor and the anti-DYK D4K or anti-flag magnetic supports from Thermal Fisher Scientific or Sigma. Western blots of the load or the L lane, unbound or flow through FT lanes, Eluded fractions marked by an E and residual bead bound samples show that the anti DYK D4K tagged proteins were efficiently bound and recovered with the thermal Fisher magnetic agarose, much more so than with the corresponding sigma anti flag beads, which showed a significant quantity of tag protein still in the unbound or flow through fraction. And this is the case with both GFP on the top and the green ranilla. Uh, protein expressed and purified on the bottom panel. If we inventory where all the protein fractionated during the purification, so if you look at the unbound, the bound and eluded fraction, and what is still left on the bead, we can see that the vast majority, or greater than about 70% of the tagged green ranilla luciferase was found in the elutions or orange segments for the Thermo Fisher uh, scientific beads. Assaying activity of the luciferase using a bioluminescent glow kit, we show that the distribution of activity in these samples correlates nicely with the distribution of luciferase protein. So the activity is shown in the second uh, panel from the left, the protein on, on the leftmost. And you can see that both of those uh, orange segments are about equivalent uh, in proportion. This shows that the purified protein retains its activity throughout the automated purification process and the gentle competitive peptide elution. Activity was actually comparably maintained for both magnetic beat supports, so both from the thermo as well as the sigma. So to conclude this second portion of the poster, anti-DY-D4K magnetic agarose with, with competitive peptide elution can be used to purify these tagged recombinant proteins overexpressed in a high yield IBT system and maintain their activity. Secondly, given the high expression yields of typically greater than 500 micrograms per mil for the HeLa IBT system, the anti-DYK D4K magnetic agarose is the best choice to provide enough capacity for automated preparative purification. So that concludes uh, the presentation, and I'd like to thank you for your attention, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Dr. Kabord, for that informative presentation. We will now start the live Q&A portion of the webinar. If you have a question you'd like to ask, please do so now. Just click on the green Q&A button at the lower left of the presentation window, type your question into the box that appears on your screen, and click on the Send button. We'll answer as many of your questions as we have time for. So let's get started. Our first question is, you showed a lot of data for purification using your beads, but can they also be used for nanogram, microgram scale IP experiments? Uh, absolutely. Um, actually, a, a, an IP is essentially a very small purification, and a lot of the uh, data that I showed was actually performed with a very small amount of beads uh, in the 10 to 25 microliter bed range, and that's that's typically in the in the range that you would do actually an IP. What are benefits of using higher binding capacity beads for IP, co-IP, and are these mass spec compatible? 
Uh, sure. So the benefits of using the higher binding capacity beads, uh, that would include, uh, well, they're, they're good for lower abundance targets. Um, so a lot of times the more antibody you have on the beads, um, it's, it's kind of like adding avidity. So uh, you can capture uh, lower abundant targets or, or weaker interactions. Um, you can also use less beads. I mean, so you can use very uh, very small amounts, and the, obviously the fewer beads that you use, the um, the lower the background. So um, the higher the binding capacity per volume of beads, uh, the better in terms of controlling background as well as capturing all of your targets. Uh, with respect to the second part of the question, as to whether these are mass spec compatible, uh, yes, we have uh, used some of these uh, beads specifically the uh, protein AG beads in proteomic experiments. And their background is very low, so it's actually very good for uh, surveying uh, the total protein landscape. Is the tag removal following elution? Um, the, so I'm, I'm assuming that question is with respect to the uh, DYK, D4K tag. And um, yes, you can cleave that. So the with enterokinase, so that tag or that uh, recognition sequence is inherent and built into that tag. And so as long as that tag is present with the four Ds and the K, you will um, you will be able to cleave that. Now we haven't done that for uh, we haven't used a, a protease to elute the the, the captured protein, um, but you can easily cleave it off after it's eluted. What other magnetic beads have you developed that offer milligram scale binding capacity? Uh, we also have nickel, NTA, and also glutathione. So again, two very commonly used uh, epitope tags. Is it true that one can elude N-terminal flag tag proteins with enterokinase? Yes. So that, that, that uh, protease sequence is part of the the DYK, D4K. Um, can you elute with it? Uh, I think people have. Uh, it's going to largely determine or depend on your protein and the accessibility of the tag and that cut site and whether the, the protease can get in there. So it would have to be tried on, on an individual basis with your protein. But uh, it's frequently, uh, that protease is frequently used to remove the tag so that you can, you can have the advantage of purifying uh, by the epitope tag but then you can also remove it to have an absolutely uh, pristine protein afterwards. Well, I would like to once again thank Dr. Kabord for her presentation. I would also like to thank LabRoots and Thermo Fisher Scientific for making today's educational webcast possible. This webinar has been approved for continuing educational credits. Please click on the CE button at the bottom left corner and follow the process to receive your credits. Before we go, I want to let everyone know that today's webcast will be available for on-demand viewing through May of 2018. You will receive an email from LabRoots letting you know when this webcast will be available for replay. Please share that announcement with your colleagues who may have missed today's live event. That's all for now. Thank you for joining us. We hope to see you again soon. Goodbye. <laughs>